Hi, I'm Sean Guthrie and welcome to the Real Estate Report. I'm going to give you a market update and news you can use, including five stories ranging from pending home sales to consumer sentiment in both Florida and nationwide, as well as COVID-19 lawsuit protections and a little bit of 1031 exchange news information. The National Association of Realtors reports that the August pending sales index tops pre-pandemic levels. The pending sales index hit a record high in August. That index is an indicator of home sales based on contract signings. The number rose 8.8% to an index number of 132.8. An index of 100 is equal to the level of contract activity in 2001 and serves as a benchmark. The number of sales under contract has risen for the past four months in a row. Each of the four major U.S. geographical regions had month-over-month month and year-after-year year increases in pending home sales. Year-over-year year contract signings actually rose 24.2%. Two things that are helping. Number one, mortgage interest rates are around and below 3%. And two, the Federal Reserve intends to keep the short-term federal funds rate near 0% for the foreseeable future. This combination should help home buyers who are entering the marketplace. One thing to note is that while pending home sales are high, not all pending sales go to closing. A potential problem that we may see in the market is if the supply of homes on the market doesn't grow steadily enough. This recovery won't be sustainable unless we have some increase in the supply of homes. Another issue is that even if mortgage interest rates are low, buyers may not be able to come up with all of the money needed to make a down payment. And if home prices continue to rise, this could definitely add fuel to the fire. There's a lot to be watching, especially in the short term future, so make sure to subscribe and I will keep you updated. You don't want to miss out. Floridian's Consumer Sentiment Index surges higher in September. The index score rose from 78.8 in August to 85.1 in September. It's the largest increase since the pandemic hit, but the level still isn't back to as high as it was before everything started. September's reading shows the largest increase in consumer sentiment since it bottomed out in April. A quote from Hector Sandoval, Director of Economic Analysis Program at the University of Florida's Bureau of Economic and Business Research, he says, quote, September's reading shows the largest increase in consumer sentiment since it bottomed out in April. Nonetheless, the index has only recovered to about half of the levels observed before the economic downturn due to the pandemic. Five components make up that index. Of those five, four increased and one decreased. Current conditions. Floridians' perceptions about current economic conditions were mixed, with their outlook about personal current conditions compared to a year ago actually dropping. On the other hand, opinions as to whether it's a good time to buy a major household item such as furniture or cars, that number showed a sizable increase in this month's readings. As far as future expectations, Floridians were more optimistic about the future across all socio-demographic groups in September. Sandoval goes on to say, the gain in September's confidence came mostly from consumers' future expectations about the national economy. Overall, Floridians are more optimistic and are anticipating greater economic prospects in the medium and long run. But it's not just Floridians. U.S. confidence is also up. After a drop in August, September's Consumer Confidence Index moved higher in September, rising 15.5 points from August 86.3 to 101.8 in September. One component of the full index, the Present Situation Index, is the consumer's assessment of current business and labor market conditions. That went up from 85.8 to 98.5. The Expectations Index, consumer's short-term outlook for the income, business, and labor market conditions, that increased from 86.6 in August to 104.0. Lynn Franco, Senior Director of Economic Indicators at the Conference Board, said, quote, Consumer confidence increased sharply in September after back-to-back -back monthly declines, but remains below pre-pandemic levels. 
a more favorable view of current business and labor market conditions, coupled with renewed optimism about the short-term outlook, helped spur this month's rebound in confidence. Consumers also expressed greater optimism about their short-term financial prospects, which may help keep spending from slowing further in the months ahead. Consumers' assessment of the labor market also improved, but it's pretty divided. 22.9% say jobs are plentiful. On the other side of the spectrum, 20% say that jobs are hard to get. All in all, consumers were more optimistic about the nation's six-month outlook. Florida Group proposes liability protections for businesses. Forty lobbyists and association representatives met over the summer to discuss ways to protect businesses from what some will fear will be a flood of lawsuits related to COVID-19. Called the Reset Task Force, the group finalized a proposal that would exempt essential businesses from any COVID-19 related litigation and change litigation rules for non-essential businesses that could be sued. The task force doesn't propose any changes that can be applied retroactively to cover businesses. It does propose that a lot of businesses identified as essential in the governor's executive orders be given immunity from COVID-19 related lawsuits. Those include hospitals, doctor's offices, dentists, urgent care centers, clinics, rehab facilities, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, child care facilities, grocery stores, produce stands, food banks, convenience stores, gas stations, auto supply stores, and banks. For the remaining businesses that could still face lawsuits, the task force recommends that the Florida legislature raise the bar for culpability in COVID-19 claims from simple negligence to gross negligence. The task force also wants lawmakers to change evidentiary standards for COVID-19 claims by upping it from the current, quote, greater weight of the evidence standard to clear and convincing evidence. If any of this does come to pass, expect a slew of legal challenges. Back in law school, especially in tort class, we always had the argument of the right to seek legal recourse versus backing up the courts and frivolous lawsuits and whatnot. So the arguments stay the same. The particulars may change though. Going to be an ongoing legal battle. So stay tuned for more information. The fight to save like-kind exchanges continues. Over four years, both Republicans and Democrats proposed measures to weaken or end 1031 like-kind exchanges. A 1031 exchange gets its name from Section 1031 of the U.S. Internal Revenue Code, which allows you to avoid paying capital gains taxes when you sell an investment property, and you reinvest the proceeds from that sale within certain time limits into a property of properties of like kind and of equal or greater value. Four years ago, as Congress began debating what was to become of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, the commercial real estate industry came together as never before and they defended Section 1031. The threat to Section 1031 posed by House Republicans in the last tax reform bill included the concept of immediate expensing of real estate. Policymakers driving that particular tax reform, known as the blueprint, saw no need to retain a deferred tax exchange mechanism when you can just write off the, uh, the taxes in the year of the purchase. Now, this is a major growth engine of the real estate industry and trade groups, commercial practitioners, they all joined forces, formed coalitions, and tried to fight the move. The coalition aimed to convince policymakers that retaining Section 1031 for real estate was essential in a bill designed to create jobs and invest in communities. The efforts paid off and the repeal was dodged for property exchanges. In September, a new challenge came up. We're going to have to see where this leads, but there's going to be a lot of news about it in the next few months. So like I said, stay tuned for further updates. Thanks for watching this real estate report with the market update and news you can use. Stay tuned for much more about real estate finance and business.